Hey guys, welcome back. So now we're getting into the 2022 Savage Avengers series by David Pepos. And really with this one, we're just testing the water. Because a few of you guys have wanted us to get into it. And a lot of others have been asking where's Weapon H for the longest time. So I figured we start this playlist on the side because this series is kicking off to a really fun start. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so through the course of how this begins, it's pretty wild because it jumps around to a lot of different scenarios, which ultimately gives us the story of how this team came together. But when this starts off, it initially begins with the cult of Set, who's having this super sketchy gathering and they're all getting hyped up for this huge blood sacrifice in order to bring back their elder god. But this doesn't go too much further because Conan, he just crashes the party. And with doing so, he starts spilling their blood before they can go spill anyone else's which in a way it also shows us what Conan's been up to lately. And really before reading this, like this is exactly what I would imagine. Conan just sneaking up on cults and just slaughtering them. But also in a couple of ways, this picks up from the previous Savage Avengers series with Kang leaving Conan here while saying that he's not much of a threat. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But from here, we then go over to Alchemax Labs where we find Anti-Venom and Elektra. And at this time, Flash has called for Elektra to help him out because with Alchemax, aside from their other shady dealings that have been going on for some time now, and for this really ever since Krakoa had become a nation or even shortly before when it introduced the dealings of Charles Xavier or Emma Frost interacting with leaders of other nations and it was for that reason at the time that Alchemax had stepped it up and they were scavenging anti-psychic tech and amongst what they had here was a device called a mad bomb which recently got taken so Flash called for Electra's help mainly because there are a few people who know Hell's Kitchen better than her. And it's here where we jump back to Conan, who's currently splitting wigs, but it's here where we find that that cult, they have the Mad Bomb. And just to be clear, for Conan, this wasn't the type of thing to where he knew the Mad Bomb was here, so he was like being a detective and he figured this whole thing out. No, this was just Conan being Conan, and the bomb just happened to be here. But through the course of this fight with Conan and these guys, it's broken up with a blast from a plasma cannon. And come to find out, that blast came from Deathlock. And so when Deathlock gets here, he tells Conan, in the name of the Deathlock army, you have been found guilty of crimes against the time stream. And when Deathlock says this, this is one of those things where it's not necessarily explained here, but my assumption is that it's pretty much picking up from the conclusion of the last series. Because after defeating the sorcerer Kulan Gap, who had gathered enough power to defeat all the heroes and the villains, with him consuming the power of Sumagorth, which then left him as the sole ruler of Earth in a dystopian future. But this then led Conan to working with Doctor Strange, Doctor Doom, Kang the Conqueror, and a number of others, who formed an alliance to defeat Kulan Gap, and they only pulled this off with Doctor Strange making a deal with Shumagorth because otherwise they were pretty much screwed. But then after this, it had led to the point to where Kang and Conan had went back in time with what initially started as a plan to take Kulan Gath out as a kid, but instead Conan had decided to take another route because the young Kulan, he was bought as a slave by a wizard that treated him cruelly and he was pretty much the reason this kid turned into a villain. So Conan was like, why not just kill the dude that made him evil? which is precisely what he did, sparing the kid's life and killing the dude that raised him instead. And from there, he made the younger Kalan promise to never use magic. And before leaving, Conan trained him how to use a sword, how to hunt, more or less crafting a different path for him that didn't lead towards sorcery. Or so it seemed. But at this point with Deathlock coming after Conan and saying that he's guilty of crimes against the time stream, there could be plenty more that that's referring to, but I can't help but think that this most recent act has gotta be the reason the Deathlock army is coming for Conan. But after seeing this, we then jump over to Clay Cortez, who's definitely a face that we have not seen in a while. But since our last talk, he's moved himself and his family away from the cabin life and into the city. Since the life of isolation didn't work out without him being found, and with him moving his family to the city, he'd hope to be hiding in plain sight. But with him moving here, he also runs the chance of becoming a statistic, which is precisely what happens, as this very unlucky random guy tries to rob Clay as he's leaving this bodega. But along with all these random events that, again, are pulling this team together, it's here where we come to find that Dane Whitman is nearby, at a bar, minding his business, until he's not. <laughs> because he looks outside and he sees Clay getting robbed, so he leaps into action to help this guy out, only to then discover that this random dude that was getting robbed 
and really don't need no help. And last but not least, nearby we then run into Cloak and Dagger. To where for them, they're kind of having this moment to where Cloak, he's making an attempt to tell Dagger how he feels. But much like any other time for these two, this moment is cut short because back over where Conan and Deathlock are just going at it, one of the members of the cult of Set, they set off the Mad Bomb. And when this goes off, it says that the city was shaken to its foundations that night. And when it did, this group of particular heroes who had already been dealing with their own demons, they weren't affected like the rest of the people in this area, who had just gone mad and started fighting each other in the streets. But for these guys, because they had already had experience at keeping a side of themselves, a dark side of themselves at bay, they had just felt this thing go off. And from there, each one of them made their way over to find out where this was coming from. And of course, for Flash and Elektra, they knew that was the Mad Bomb they were looking for. And aside from them, Dane Whitman, he had knew of the Mad Bomb, mainly because he had recognized it from the Avengers database. But aside from that, everyone else had pretty much just came here to get to the source of what sent out that signal in order to shut it down. But when they all get here and they find Conan going back and forth with Deathlock, and very quickly it turns into Deathlock versus everybody. And Deathlock holds his own. Like for starters, when he's attacked by Clay, he absorbs Clay's gamma radiation. Black Knight goes for his attack, it hardly does anything. But then shortly after, Elektra stabs him in the same spot. Which doesn't stop Deathlock as he continues to go for Flash Thompson next. But out of everyone here, it isn't until Cloak and Dagger step in to where they're able to restrain Deathlock. But with Elektra leaving her side in Deathlock's arm, this leaves him open for another attack since his arm's not able to heal around the side, since his nanites can't close and repair it because he hasn't pulled it out yet. And of course he hasn't pulled out the side because his hands are pretty occupied at the moment. But with Elektra seeing this, she tells Conan to strike Deathlock on that weak point, which Conan does, but with doing this, Conan ends up piercing Deathlock's time circuit, which from there opened this huge time portal, which nobody wanted to go into because they didn't know where it was going. But of course, everybody ends up getting sucked in. And as it turns out, it takes them all back to the Hyborian Age, which from here makes Conan right at home, with it being the time that he came from. But as far as everyone else, they have just entered a whole new world. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below so we can go to patreon.com slash dopespill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. With this one kind of just testing the waters because a few of you mentioned that you wanted us to pick up the new Savage Avengers series. And again, a lot of you guys have been asking about Weapon H. To where in his case, throughout this series, it looks like we're getting some new information as far as how he operates as a Hulk. And I'm super curious to see how that pans out. So I kind of figured I'd just put this one out there, see how it does, and if it does well, we'll keep it going. But if it turns out you guys aren't interested, then we'll just go on to the next. But either way, let me know you guys' thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll do it again on the next one. Alright, later.